Hi, it's Julian Manor, Easy Swing Coach. Well, here we go again, another month of lockdown. Uh, so I thought I'd take this opportunity before uh, we have to shut the doors uh, for another month to make a video to explain a little bit about my journey of golf and what I'm looking to try and achieve with my golf swing that I know has made a massive difference. Uh, so when I first started to be a, a professional, I was very much what you would call a PJ Tour player template type golf swing. So everything was pieced together, everything was analysed to death. If I was fractionally off the end of the world, <laughs> uh, which we know is not true, uh, but I was very much into the golf swing. I wanted to do it perfectly. And I think we all know by now that there is no such thing as a perfect golf swing. Uh, what we're looking for is a golf swing that's efficient, it works, it's reliable, it's easy to do, and most importantly, you can have fun with it on the golf course. Um, so I used to have an awful lot of golf lessons. Um, the chap I used to go to, I asked him how long would it take for me to change my golf swing. From, so I was brought up in a really windy area. It was, uh, I got down to quite a low handicap, very, very windy place. So I used to hit all my golf shots very low. Uh, now, if there was a pin at the front of the green, tucked behind a, a bunker, I could never get to that pin because I could never fly the ball high enough. So I went on a journey to change my golf swing. Um, I needed to flight the ball properly. I needed to spin the ball better. Uh, and I said to this gentleman, who's actually a very well-known coach, how long is it going to take me to learn the new golf swing? It's just quite simple, Julian, we're gonna need 10 lessons. And in between each lesson, you're gonna to have to have 40 hours practice and it's going to take us 10 sessions. So it took me 400 hours to change my golf swing. And I promise you, one of the 40 hour sessions that I went through, all I did was move the club from here to there. And that's all I did, 40 hours. So if I just stand here a second, so literally just moving the club from here to here, because I used to have a real issue of breaking my wrist down too quickly, closing the club face to deal off the club, to get the ball to go low. Um, and that was brain numbingly boring, uh, but it was a process that I was willing to do to try and make a difference. Uh, thankfully, when I met Brian Sparks and we started to go through this uh, new methodology, the, the easiest swing, within no time at all, it, I was starting to move so much better, so much freely, and most importantly for me, not in pain. I used to have chronic left knee pain and lower back pain uh, from keeping my foot still and trying to coil, you can even hear it there, um, trying to coil my body into awkward positions that was just dreadful for me. So let me just explain to you some of the things that I'm looking to try and achieve with my golf swing. So the first thing that I want to uh, achieve is to be relaxed. Now what I've found, the best way to be relaxed is to over tighten, hold it for two seconds, let go, and when you're in that relaxed state, great, great opportunity to hit a few golf shots. And um, so I would massively encourage you to try that if you don't know that you're tense. So over tighten, relax, and then play your shot. The other thing that I'm looking to do is making sure that I turn my body allowing my left ankle to move with freedom. Sometimes it doesn't, it looks like it's not lifting a lot, but I can promise you that my ankle is nice and free within my golf shoe. I don't necessarily feel the need to go right up onto my toe because I've still got uh, okay mobility, but it's definitely nice and free within my golf swing. And I'm actually starting to see this with more tour pros, thankfully, so they're going to have a lot less injuries. The second thing that I'm looking to do is to turn properly. I really enjoy the feeling of turning. It creates loads of space when I'm trying to hit the golf ball. Loads of room here so that my club has got somewhere to go. Now, if I don't turn my hips, my right hip gets in the way. And from there, I tend to come over the top of the shots and hit either pulls or shots that go off to the right, which I absolutely hate doing. The third thing I'm looking to achieve is to keep my arm comfortably relaxed. So uh, what I'm, I'm trying desperately to avoid is that tension in my left arm. I don't want my left arm tight. I'm just letting my arm relax and it goes where it goes. That's the third thing I'm looking for. 
Another, the fourth thing that I want to do, I want to transfer my weight really well through impact. And a habit that we've all got into over the years is just keeping the head down a little bit too long. So I'm really having fun hitting some shots and just moving my head nice and freely. Just getting it to move forward. When I do that, I hit the best golf shots. I mean, that one's hardly deviated off the line. Uh, that's only an eight time that I've hit there, and that's gone 145 yards carry, 158 yards in total distance. Uh, but the push pull is 0.0 degrees. I know that when I move my head really well, I do hit some incredibly good golf shots. And the final thing that I'm looking to achieve with my golf swing is when I've hit the shot, just finishing in balance, just holding holding that finish until the golf ball's landed. If you can't hold it for that long, then there's an issue somewhere within your golf swing that you need to get sorted. So just, I thought as a recap, I thought it was quite nice to just show you some of the things that I'm still working on. Uh, we don't get it right all the time, but if you can keep having fun, keep exploring the, the, the six principles of the easy swing the, and definitely try and get rid of those deadly don'ts. So just a quick recap on the deadly don'ts. Don't keep your head down. Don't keep your lead arm straight. And don't keep your lead foot pinned to the floor in the back swing. Just let this be free. Once you've hit the shot, follow the flight of the golf ball. And I'm certain that this is going to make a massive difference to your golf game. Um, next year, I've, I've now got an opportunity to coach at a place called the Oxfordshire, which is a wonderful place, uh, lovely 18-hole golf course, driving range, short game area, beautiful uh, hotel complex there. So I'm going to host some uh, two-day courses, of which the dates are on my website. They're in March, April and May, so that'll, uh, that'll be an overnight stay for you guys. Uh, and then I'm also looking to do maybe a week's course in the UK for those ones, those people who want to fly over who are restricted from, from different countries. Um, so yeah, there's an awful lot going on, still doing a lot of uh, FaceTime sessions with, with golfers all over the world, which is wonderful. And most importantly, keep safe, keep well, look after yourself. If you're bored, drop me a message, julianmellagolfschool.com. Always happy to answer any questions. And have fun with your golf swing. And don't be afraid to, to do the things that we speak about. And most importantly, the biggest tip of all, trust your golf swing when you get on that golf course. Trust is a must, as they say. Trust your golf swing if you're making these changes and see what you're really capable of doing. Hope this has helped guys, thanks for watching and look after yourselves, bye.